This episode is brought to you by Cozy Earth. This is so fun! We're the Lockwoods, and we're traveling the world to experience up close and in person all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise be learning about only through books and TV. After consuming copious calories in the streets and markets of downtown Osaka, we're bullet training through the birthplace of Ninja to meet back up with our favorite fellow filming fam. Mom Duty! And while we're sharing a mountainside Nagano chalet for the weekend, we figured we might as well put all four kids through a little ninja training themselves. Let's get to it. This is our third train of the day. We just got off of the most beautiful and fastest bullet train that we've taken so far in Japan. But this one is more of a local train and it's only gonna be about 40 minutes until we get to Mayoko Kogen, Mayoko Kogen, Miyoko Kogen, Miyoko Kogen station where we're headed. And we made it. Now we just need to find the Ocampos. And if you've seen some of our past episodes, you've met them before, but Nelvin, Rocio, and their twin kids, who are Brooklyn and Cold Sage, Knox and Nia. <laughs> A lot of stairs here. We can't find our Go friend. Down. I hope they're not at the wrong station. Oh my God. I just asked them, Mayoko Kogan station, right? Wrong. <laughs> They're at a different station. So they went to Nagano, the, the station. We're in Nagano, the region, really. And so I got a little confused when she said they were going to Nagano. We're gonna get a few things out of the way while we're waiting for them. We're gonna grab some groceries. We're gonna check into the chalet. Uh, and then it'll be probably about time to pick them up from the station. And then we'll all be together. So I guess they'll take a basket. Look at those carrots look perfect. They look like cartoon carrots. We're just gonna pick up a few snacks because we're hopefully gonna eat most of our meals out. I guess we'll just get some more fruit, some stuff for breakfast, and call it a day. Look at the mountains. It is so beautiful here. <laughs> This is it. Oh, and Mom Duty caught the train. That's gonna get them here the fastest. They'll be here soon. So we're just gonna settle in before they get picked up. The chalet here is called Wonderland and we found it on wasabichalets.com. This is the main living area. So living room, huge TV, and the dining room. It seats six, as you can see, and then three more bar stools up here. The whole place sleeps 10 maximum. So we fit party eight. And this kitchen is really cool, goes around the corner. And this corner. But I suspect we're not gonna be using the kitchen much. We're just gonna have some snacks and hopefully we can find some restaurants open. We already unpacked our groceries here, so just some yogurt, some fruits, uh, plenty of Red Bull. Milk for coffees, English muffins, some snacks, chippies, stuff like that. The kitchen is one of three bedrooms, plus they have a bunk room where the kids are gonna be sleeping and they are most excited about the climbing wall. So I think we're gonna have a lot of fun here. It's actually walking distance to the base of the mountain, but what are we missing? Some snow. It's not the right season, but it's great for hiking and hot springs and more summer-like mountain activities. That one bedroom is upstairs, the rest of them are downstairs here. We come here and we've got a king room. Beautiful views. Right over here is a waterfall that the owner actually built and it's a hot water waterfall that comes down from the hot springs. Unfortunately, there's no water right now, so we can't even use it. And it looks like there's a loft up above this bed, although I think it's just for storage. There's like no, no ladder or stairs to get up to it. And then if we come back down here, down a couple of other steps, this is the twin room. Chilly in here, but it has a heater. <laughs> <laughs> and what's back here? Show us, what you got? Playroom with a monkey bar. I have to like get stand in here and then jump. And then it's down yet another set of stairs. And this is where we have the downstairs bathroom that has a toilet room, a sunken tub, and a sauna. And right in through here, here's our climbing wall. And it's two stories. And then if we come back here and go up another set of stairs, it's the magic room for the kids. Two sets of bunks, Apple TV. So that's where the kids are gonna party all weekend. All right, Phil, now let's get the sheets. Yeah, you're probably gonna think we're crazy, but some people always travel with their favorite coffee. Some people travel with their favorite teddy bear. 
Some people travel with their favorite shampoos, conditioners, hair dryers, whatever. We never travel without our Cozy Earth sheet set. We just sleep so much better on them. And when you're traveling back and forth around the world the way we are, dealing with jet lag all the time, getting a good night's sleep is paramount. These are game changers for us. Now get these out of here. Cozy Earth sheets are made from premium viscose. That's 100% sustainable bamboo. Yeah, they're moisture wicking, they're temperature regulating. I mean, they basically feel like unicorn fur against your skin. And if you think we're crazy, just ask Oprah because she said they're the softest ever. And that's why they've been on her list of favorite things for five years in a row. And since the pillowcases are so soft, you're gonna wake up without any tangles in your hair. These Cozy Earth products are free of toxins and harsh chemicals. And in addition to using sustainable bamboo, their packaging is totally reusable, which lowers the carbon footprint and landfill waste. They also have a great collection of luxury loungewear, and it's by far my favorite brand to travel in. It makes our constant long haul flights feel warm and comfy. We don't just travel with these cozy earth sheets. We have a set to come home to in between trips. That's how addicted we've become to the luxury of Cozy Earth's line. It's become a big part of us being able to travel and live comfortably. So bringing them along with us helps us feel at home no matter where we go. If you want to try Cozy Earth, you can go to CozyEarth.com, but be sure to use our promo code ALWAYS30 to get 30% off your order. And I think our friends are here. Here comes Nia. Welcome to the chalet, guys. Yeah, bud. <laughs> we made it! What is happening? <laughs> Woo! We're finally here! Woo! We made it! <laughs> they travel really light here. Do you guys have a luggage sponsor? <laughs> Yet? Come on, Sam's the night. We need ya. We need ya. Alright, we're gonna give them a quick tour of the place and then we're gonna be thinking about heading out and getting some more information about dinner. First challenge of the night is we have to find a restaurant that is open because this is obviously the off season and a lot of the restaurants close. So we're gonna chance it. We're gonna knock on every door <laughs> until we find somebody who will feed us. And we're gonna start with this one. This should be interesting. Do you think we just knock? Is that what he said? The door is locked. I'm knocking. Big interior, take a little bit of time to get out here, but I have a feeling maybe nobody's home right now or they just don't hear, so. We might have to head into town first and then come back and try this one later. We really need two different places because we need a place to eat tonight and we need a place to eat tomorrow. And ideally, they wouldn't be the same place. We'll try that one again later. This seems to be about the main street in the uh, little area here. So a bit more civilization. We're hoping we can find a restaurant that's open. This place is like a ghost town. Everything is closed. And we're just trying to find one open restaurant. We found people and they're being so helpful. They've guided us across the street saying that they're gonna open at six o'clock because we're here, I think. I think normally they'd be closed if nobody comes around, but we're here. So hopefully they're gonna open for us. Uh, all right, so that's about 45 minutes from now, which gives us just the right amount of time to go back to this convenience store. Maybe grab some sake, kill a little bit of time. Thank you. Looks like a really good selection. Whiskies too, Japanese whiskies. I'm not much of a whiskey drinker, but legendary apparently. Success on the sake. We got two bottles. And believe it or not, this is what, about $10? Seven to $10 a piece. Gotta go to the source on everything. We still have a half an hour, so this is gonna be perfect. I'm always fascinated that every single sake bottle that has a metal screw on cap, does this. Try to, you know, you have a metal cap on soda, it never does that. Any other drink, beer, I don't think it does that, but sake every single time, it's crazy. Never above you. Never below never you. Never below you. Always, Always beside, beside you. Good job, guys. So good. This is my favorite sake I think we've ever had. Really? Yeah, including the first night here. It'd be a little bit better if it was chilled, but it's good. Really good. <laughs> open, oh no, you did it, they're open. Success, shoot your drinks. Oh, yes. Let's go! This is just like in Tokyo at the ramen restaurant. I love it. Our food's here. We have noodles, we have pork cutlets, and we have our friends. We have the best company ever. I'm so glad that we found this place and we are overrunning this table at least. So we're gonna dig in. We are sneaking out of the cabin, sneaking into the van because we're going to a ninja village! It's ninja time! 
Welcome to the Kids Ninja Village in Tagakuchi. It's a little bit wet out this morning, but a little bit of rain never stopped a ninja. First things first, we gotta get dressed. Ninjas also use a lot of hand gestures. <laughs> They're throwing stars. Oh! You got one, Brooklyn? I got a right. Good job. I had no idea how talented she was at throwing knives. The second part of ninja training is metal throwing stars. Come on, come on, come on. Moms are gonna race this time, so we're gonna see who's faster. Me or Rocio. Let's see who goes down first. It's on like Donkey Kong. Let's do this. That was awesome. I totally nailed that. Oh my gosh, I was so shocked that I froze and I didn't even scream. I just heard Aaron screaming the entire time. To be a ninja, you must have great balance. And I'm pretty sure that riding a really fast scooter down a rolling hill like that is not part of ninja training. This is upper grades or adults. Oh. So I went on the upper grades. The next critical ninja skill is climbing. The next requisite ninja skill is high speed maneuverability, zip lining. I'm pulling a zip line back. Oh, this is so much like my workout. <laughs> Always be challenging. Zip line is nothing that Rocio and I can't handle. Ninja time. You know, these are just my battle, battle wounds. Yeah, the judges are gonna notice that. <laughs> Nothing like getting a little dirty. Next requisite skill, agility. The thousand year history of ninja, or shinobi as they're really known, goes back about a thousand years, give or take a couple of centuries. And back then the roots really came from self-defense between villagers and villages and it was really a part-time job for most of them. Some were farmers, some were former samurai, some were even priests. And eventually it evolved into more of a mercenary role. They were spies, they were assassins, and so they were a counterpart to the samurai, which had a code of honor called Bushido that prevented them from using a lot of the guerrilla warfare tactics that ninja would commonly employ. See, the Japanese language doesn't have a grammatical number, so in Japanese, it's one ninja, many ninja, one samurai, many samurai, one geisha, many geisha. But because samurai weren't willing under their code of honor to employ a lot of these tactics, they were actually one of the main employers of ninja. So they would essentially hire ninja to do their dirty work. The winner. I know what dirty work is like. I think it makes me a better ninja. Next requisite ninja skill is, is sneakery. Let's see if we can sneak up on the kids. <gasps> Let's get it. Come get on, it. Dead end. Oh, I think I know where it is. We're trapped in here. It's a dead end. Are you lost? You look lost. Lost. Follow me, though. Actually, don't follow me. I don't know where I'm going. Current ninja skill perseverance. Made it. That was exhausting, but we made it. We made it alive. Ninja training is no joke. I am so overstimulated. I could go for some lunch. The next requisite ninja skill is sustenance. Boba with the melon soda right there. Ninja are generally considered to have originated southwest of here, just outside of Kyoto, which was at the time the capital of Japan. Ninjas are masters at martial arts, especially ninjutsu or ninpo, as it's also known in Japan. There are many different schools of ninjutsu. From the founding cities, you have Igariyu ninjutsu, you have Koga ryu ninjutsu, 
But where we are right now is Togakushi Ryu Ninjutsu. And this one was formed 800 years ago by Daisuka Nishana. And he actually traveled to Iga City, and that's where he learned ninjutsu, and then he brought it back here, started his own school. So there are a lot of trains of thoughts about which one is most authentic, but it is generally considered that the Tagakushi Ryu Nijitsu is the only one that over the past 800 years has actually been passed down through 34 different families over that period of time. Yeah. Wasn't Star Wars based off of ninjas? Absolutely, ninjas and samurai, and you'd probably have to ask George Lucas for the exact answer, but think about all the similarities. The name, Jedi itself is so similar to samurai, they both end in I, even though it's English that they're speaking in the movies. It's still the same for plural and singular. There's no Jedis, it's Jedi. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Kenobi, Shinobi, the other word for ninja, nearly identical. Lightsabers are essentially space age katana, the dress for Jedi. Very similar to what a samurai would wear. And if you think about the Sith, the dark side, of the Jedi, they look more like ninjas. A lot of them dress in black, they even have hooded faces sometimes. So clearly, an intentional reverence to samurai and ninja. Well done today. I think that was the most fun and least authentic ninja training academy I've ever been through. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. You've honored yourselves with hard work today. The Medallion of Ninja Awesomeness. Colt, please, step forward. You're a true ninja. Nak san, you have shown true <laughs> awesome ninja ninja. <laughs> Are you next? Please step forward. Coveted medallion of ninja ninja. <laughs> Brooklyn, by the power vested in me, I have no power. I present you with the coveted medal of ninja ninja. You have shown true honor and bravery on this course today. I present you with the coveted medal of ninja ninja. <laughs> you have shown the most amount of ninja ninja on the course today. <laughs> now that our ninja training is complete, it's time to go into town and explore something that also originated in this area. The history of soba noodles also started here with the religious training of monks. Just outside the city, there are fields of soba flowers and the monks would take those flowers, powder them up and mix it with water and use them to sustain them through their training. <laughs> And the 17th and 19th century soba noodles are pretty much modern day. To be a soba noodle, it has to be 30% buckwheat, at least 30% buckwheat. And the more buckwheat in them, the better the noodle. And there's a very specific way you're supposed to eat it. So first you have to taste the broth. Ooh, it's like a really deep condensed soy-based broth, salty. Then you taste the noodle. It's a really meaty noodle. It's not silky like the ramen noodle. It's like tough, like it's got body to it. And But they're very thin, so it also has a little gentleness to it as well. Then you take your toppings, which is typically wasabi, horseradish, and green onion. Put them on the noodles to your liking. Then the way you really enjoy your lunch or dinner is you then take your noodles, dip it in the sauce, and enjoy. Oh, this is so great. This is incredible to be here in Japan, in Togakushi, where they started, and taste the soba noodles in their birthplace. It's just, it's amazing what travel can do for your perspective on life and your gratitude and appreciation. Because I am full of it. And I'm gonna get full on these soba noodles. There's one more step. After you've eaten your noodles, you take soba yu, which smells like rice water, and you pour it into your leftover sauce. And then you drink it. Oh, that's good. That makes like a much lighter sauce. It's much thicker when you have it with the noodles dipping it in, so the noodles absorb a bit of that flavor. One thing, you can have hot noodles or cold noodles. I prefer the cold noodles because I think you get more flavor when it's colder but this was beyond expectation, seriously, to have these noodles here. And the people here are so kind. They have gone out of their way, bent over backwards, to accommodate us, and especially with our loud kids. They're being so nice, and we really love it here. Togakushi is a really, really great little village. So it's a ski town too. So you come here in the winter, you go skiing, you come here in the spring, you go to the ninja village, and you come here in the summer for all the hiking. 
We are so full of soba noodles and we have one more place to go that shows just how amazing Nagano is and how special it is here. We took the long journey to Nagano. Well, we were already in Nagano, the region, but now we're in Nagano, the city. When we knew we were coming to Japan, it was really important to me to come here to Nagano. <laughs> I grew up a competitive figure skater and competed internationally as a pairs figure skater. And my best friend was Tara Lipinski. She's still my best friend, but back then, 15 year old Tara Lipinski won the 1998 Olympics here in Nagano. <laughs> and I'm just the proudest best friend in the whole world. I really feel uh, like I was with her when she was here, when we were just kids. And it just means so much to me, knowing her so well and knowing all the sacrifices that she made and all the hard work that she put in and all the insane talent that she has. I just felt like I had to be here and kind of feel what it was like through her eyes and um, all the memories that we had from back then when she competed. Well, I'm so, so proud of her. I'm still so, so proud of her. Tara, I love you. But this is the end of our Nagano tour here, and we're going to Tokyo next. We're not done yet still, so please subscribe to BNC Pros. Subscribe to BNC Pros and, and all- Buku Art. No space, but a capital A. Yes, also that. And maybe if you- Cult Craft too. Well, actually, it's something else. Yeah. I forgot what it was, but yeah. Yes, and then if you have time, you also, might- Also, also, <laughs> always be changed. <laughs> but what a great way to bring it full circle from being at the Ninja Village and being here with such good friends, coming here to see the Olympic Park, the Olympic Torch, because that, I don't think I explained that that torch up there um, was the torch from the games. Over there they have the Olympic rings. And this flower right there, that's called the Nagano flower. It's the flower from the Olympics. But what a great way to bring it all full circle with the competitiveness and the athleticism. Athletes are kind of like ninjas, right? You want to see one of my ice skating moves? Let's see if I can still do it. That was a single axle. <laughs> no triples, just a single. <laughs> yeah, that was actually really good. I'm gonna spin in the air. Yee, I did it, I did it, I did it one spin. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh, All right, no. <laughs> we're done with this episode. <laughs> we're the Lockwoods. Aaron, Phil, Reagan, Brooklyn, and Cole. We're traveling the world to experience, up close and in person, all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise be consuming only through textbooks and TV. We think it's a better way to learn, and we're working hard to fund this little experiment in the hope that our kids will grow up wiser, kinder, and more grateful for the beauty of our diverse planet and its people.